how to set up owner financing for commercial real estate. This is one of my favorite things to do and I get this so much. I get owner financing so much so you're gonna want to pay attention to this one. We're gonna deliver some good stuff on this one. <music> So first of all, when do you ask for seller financing on commercial real estate? Well, every time. I literally ask for it every single time I go in and buy commercial real estate. That doesn't mean I get it all the time, but I get it at least 50% of the time. So make sure you're asking. And here's the things that I like to look for when I'm asking or the specific assets that I'm looking for. Let's get into it. So first of all, when I'm looking for an asset, I'm, there's a specific thing that I look for knowing that I could get a really good deal. I mean, really good deal. I look at price per square foot. I'm looking at all these different things and I'm looking at an in distress commercial piece of asset. So what does that look like? You're like, all right, John, that's whatever. Like, what does that mean? Well, it doesn't have to mean in financial distress. It may, just means like the property doesn't really have any income coming in. So, Unlike traditional when you um, finance and when you finance a house, when you finance a house and you're buying it personally, they look at your income and they look at the condition of the property, right? So based on your income, could you provide uh, or make the mortgage payments or not? It's really that simple. What's your debt to income ratio? Now, when we get into commercial real estate, they look at the asset of the commercial asset itself. Like how much income is this producing and can it support itself in case something happens to this owner? And a lot of the properties we look at are dead assets, meaning there is no income coming in from them on a monthly uh, basis. So typically commercial real estate owners, it's owned by someone that's been owned it for quite some time or a company and they're a little detached from it emotionally. So they understand like, oh, they've done a pretty crappy job of managing this property because there is no money coming in. And so they have to be flexible. And even if they're not, think about this, like every month that goes by, what are they doing? They're writing more checks. They're writing checks for maintenance. They're writing checks um, for uh, water, sewer garbage, electricity, taxes. All these things get paid on a monthly basis, whether the property is producing or not. So those checks could get pretty painful to write at the end of the day. So what I like to do is I like to offer them something, typically some, some money in their pocket, a little bit, and then for me to take over that project. And I'll say, look, I'm gonna come in, I have to do some heavy lifting here. I use those exact words too. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do some heavy lifting here. I'm, I need to fix this so people want to actually lease this property. In doing this negotiation, they're now paying attention. Oh, I get some money in my pocket. That means I don't have to write a check. They're gonna fix what this thing looks like. And now this guy's talking about actually getting tenants that I haven't had in some time. Wow, this sounds like a blessing. And if something happens, guess what? I get the property back. Sometimes they're probably banking deep down that I mess up and they get the property back. Never gonna happen. Anyways, so let's say I negotiate those terms. Great, I've now negotiated those terms. I put the deal in escrow. Once it's in escrow, I open up an escrow account for mortgage servicing, right? So I have a servicing company that I pay monthly payments to, and then those payments go directly to, uh, to the owner. The reason I like to do this is from a payment history standpoint, if I'm refinancing the building, it's coming from a reputable company. Also, they show the, the uh, cash checks, they do an auto deduction, Let's say there's a mortgage on that, comp on that property as well, and so I'm doing kind of an overlay or blanket on top of it. Yes, you can do this even if they have a mortgage. Now, some people might be like, oh, how do you do that? Your escrow company will sort it out, but you can do, even if they have a mortgage, you could still buy the property and they'll pay the mortgage company, and then any excess, if there is some, will go to the person that you bought the building from. So there could be two checks going out. All right, so. That's essentially how you're setting up um, the loan servicing for uh, this particular asset. So now we've talked about how to negotiate and actually how to set up the seller financing. Here's another uh, tip or trick I like to do, and that is once I get the building stabilized, the way I see it is why do I need to wait to refinance it? 
right? So once it's stabilized, meaning once there's, it's fixed up, there's tenants in place, there's all this money, gobs of money coming in every month. What I like to do is I like to take an opportunity to try to renegotiate with that seller. What's that mean? Let's just say hypothetically I owe someone a million dollars and I'm refinancing it and maybe I say, hey, look, I could refinance it or I could pay you off sooner, but I could only pay you $900,000. Is that something you would be interested in? I could pay you off three years early. You never know unless you ask. In fact, most, most of the time when I do ask this, they love that residual income coming in, that five, that five or 4% on their money, and you're not even tackling the interest. So most of the time, these people like it. But once in a while, you never know anybody's financial situation, and they may say yes. So I've gotten haircuts on what I've owned, basically giving me a second chance to renegotiate the price of that property. Anyways, it's a beautiful thing when they say um, yes, uh, they'll take a haircut just saves you money, it's money right back in your pocket. So this is something that I do and I like to put longer term debt on it at that time. Before we get to these golden nuggets, this golden nugget that I'm gonna share with you on how to get a second chance to renegotiate your original sales price. Yes, renegotiate the original sales price. Do me a favor and click on the link below to subscribe. Let me bring you content like this daily. I'm gonna give you these, these I call them nuggets. You tell me what you think of them. But now let's go ahead and get into it. So here's the nice thing about everything we just talked about. So you bought the building, you took the building down, you used seller financing to do so. Maybe you used a partner or raised some equity uh, from another partner to, get, to take down the building and rehab it. So what you can do now is you could refinance it, pay them off, and then see if they wanna participate with you again. If there's any sort of equity, maybe you could take out some of that equity and do it yourself on the next project. Anyways, this is something that you could duplicate over and over and over and over again, building your portfolio, building your net worth while you do so. I hope that you've enjoyed this content. Again, thank you for following. If you've liked this and you're not sure how to quite evaluate these properties yet, the commercial ones, do me a favor, click on the link below. We're gonna give you how to evaluate and calculate returns on commercial real estate assets. This is for yours for free just by watching this today. Anyways, hope you've enjoyed it. Take care.